Hello, welcome to Lecture 5 of Communication 1110. In this lecture, I'm going to uh, finish the section where we discuss what is uh, complementary and supplementary to Chapter 1. And I'm going to, in the spirit of the class, try to be as audience-centered as possible and talk about the subject that most of you are concerned about, and that is speech anxiety, communication apprehension, or good old stage fright. And there are uh, two ways I want to look at this. First is that the textbook has a very good section on this subject, and you should probably go to that, read what he has to say, and it, perhaps on the first part of the lecture guide, where in section one you can go ahead and write your notes, uh, the main headings and advice that he gives there. What I'd like to do, secondly, is give you my extra input about what uh, you can do about communication and apprehension or speech anxiety or whatever you uh, prefer to call it. And keeping in mind that you will have communication anxiety not just in public speaking, that is the one thing people usually think of, but you can have it on dates, at job interviews, or in many other situations where you feel there's some sort of risk involved or uncomfortableness of uh, the situation. So maybe some of these things will help you with other situations as well. The first uh, thing that I would like to say under uh, my section of this is that you never look as nervous as you feel. You may say, well, I felt like a 10 on a scale of 1 to 10, but we probably only perceived it as a 2. And I can say this from over 30 years of teaching public speaking. Students will often sit down, I was so nervous. And they're just so focused on their own anxiety. And our response is, well, we didn't see it. We saw a little bit of it, but not that much. So you never look as nervous as you probably feel internally. And in fact, there are certain things you can do with your body that you know, if you learn to do them, we won't notice it at all, even if you are bothered uh, internally by the anxiety. The second thing is that you should, and I, and I consider this one of the most important ones, is where you put your focus. Do you focus on yourself or do you focus on the message and the audience? And this is an extreme example, but let's say your neighbor's house was on fire. It's 2 o'clock in the morning and you realize that. You would not worry that you were in your pajamas. You would not worry about a lot of things. You would be so focused on getting out there and getting the message out and helping your neighbor that you wouldn't be focused on yourself. So in a sense, while that's extreme, that's what I want you to think about. Focus on what I have to say, why it's important, who are these people, not on their perceptions of me or how I might mess up. Which brings us to the third point is you need to reflect a little bit on why you're nervous in the first place. What's going on with that? Uh, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of failing? Are you afraid of looking foolish? Are you afraid of people rejecting you? In many cases I found students had a bad experience in the past that they're still reliving. That they uh, in sixth grade were, were in a play and messed up and everybody made fun of them or something like that. So they have performance anxiety. Well all I can say about that is that that was then and this is now. And we are not those people who made fun of you in sixth grade. And you need to forget that and realize that this is, this is different. And I really try in my class to make a, a, a learning environment where we're all in this together and where the students are not allowed to be distracting in the class. I don't like people getting up and going to the bathroom in the middle of a speech. That's just not acceptable. I don't like people playing with their phones or their iPads or reading the newspaper or something. Everybody in the room should be focused on the speaker and the speaker should be focused on the audience when we're having speeches and there should be this lack of distractions because it can be very uh, very disconcerting to a beginning speaker to have people not paying attention so I want to have a good environment where we're all supportive of each other. Now I will admit that there are some cases where students and, and people in their approach to public speaking have such anxiety that they probably need a little bit deeper uh, counseling and in some cases they need uh, some, some me medical help, let's put it that way. And 
Uh, for myself, I would not have felt this way 10 years ago, but I started having panic attacks, this, you know, true confessions here, in a certain situation. It was not related to public speaking. But I realized that there are situations where people panic and have extreme anxiety, so sometimes you need help with that. But I would not recommend that until you think about what exactly are you afraid of and trying to reflect on that and, and t do some good self-talk about your experiences. The fourth one is to keep in mind the physical. Several points here. First of all, if you're a person who gets up in the morning, drinks a Coca-Cola, and eats a donut, that is not a good preparation for giving a speech. You need to eat an egg and some whole wheat toast or some yogurt or something healthy, even if that's not what you normally do, because the protein will give you sustained energy, whereas the sugar will make your blood sugar go up and then back down, and it might happen in the middle of the speech. Also, if you're a person who, like me, drinks way too much coffee, you probably want to think about that because it can make you too jittery, it can make you go too fast. So think about what you put in your body. Be sure the night before the speech that you get enough sleep. Another thing is to come to, cl come to the speaking engagement early. A lot of people uh, wait until the last minute, they rush in, and I can always tell when a student is just rushed because they're just not focused. Whereas if you get there early, you can sit, you can reflect, you can, you can focus on what you're going to do, you'll be a lot better off. So there, there's physical things. Um, another thing you can do is if you feel the tension coming out in your body, and, and let me explain this. What happens is that your body wants to run because of the fear, and it gets all this extra adrenaline and energy, but your mind says, no, you must stay. So you've got this, this body thing of, I gotta go, I gotta go, and you've got this mind thing that says, no, stay and give the speech. So the body is doing things you don't like. You're being jittery, you might sweat, you might uh, change colors, <laughs> the different things people do have g uh, gestures that are unproductive. So you, um, you want to learn to channel that physical energy. One way you can do that is by walking around when you speak. Another way is if you feel the jitters before the speech, is to do an exercise where you just take your hands, and I'm going to do it here, it's going to look odd, but it does work, where you just take your hands and you just tense them and hold them for 10 or 20 seconds and then just let them go. And a lot of the energy will come out that way. You can also do it with your legs. Just tense your legs, tighten it, hold it, and then let it go. But the walking around helps too. So there's some physical things that you can do that can help you to dispel some of that extra energy that your body is producing. I'd also like you to forget the cliches. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, one of the cliches is that if, you, if you're nervous about speaking, you should think of the people naked or in their underwear. I really hate that. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. For one thing, I, that would not work for me. I don't want to think of people that way. But in another sense, when, when, if you're honest with it, that's sort of demeaning to the audience. And you shouldn't do anything that's demeaning to the audience. It's basically you're saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think of them in a negative way instead of a positive way. And superiority is not a, a good approach to take. Um, you also don't want to think of your audience as being uh, less knowledgeable. You don't want to disrespect them in any way. Um, other people will say, well, just look over the head. Don't look at their faces. Well, no, no, no. That's not a good, uh, a good type of advice either. You definitely want to look at each person individually. You might want to talk to one person for about five seconds and then talk to another person for five to ten seconds and move around the room. Be sure you get everybody. And this is part of the muscle memory. There's a tendency we all have to look at one side of the room, and these other people have no idea what's going on. They say, what am I, chop liver? You know, you need to look at everybody, even though it's hard, everyone in the room, and practice so that these people get as much eye contact as those people, as those people, and those people. So be careful of that as well. But don't look over the heads of the audience. That's not a good approach to, to dealing with stage fright. And uh, the last thing you shouldn't do, as far as these cliches, is memorize. Never memorize a speech because you really don't have time to do that here. It's not practical. And if you forget something, it totally throws you off. And that's not something that you want to do. All right, some do's and don'ts to finish this up. First of all, don't procrastinate. <laughs> don't procrastinate. 
start early on your preparation. Just like I said, get to the performance early, start early on your preparation. You should spend a good deal of time practicing as well as the preparation of the outline and the research that you have to do. Do not read your um, speech to us. This is not read to each other class, this is speak to each other class. Practice with people so that you will get used to looking at people when you speak and film yourself, take advantage of that as I mentioned before. Uh, if you are female, I'm going to give you a couple of points here. Wear something that you're comfortable wearing and that you know looks good on you. Be, just don't come in your you know, normal everyday. Look a little bit better. And if you have hair that tends to fall on your face, I would really recommend that you do something to pull it back with barrettes or something because it's very distracting for you and for us if you have hair constantly falling in your face and you, you become nervous and, and aware of it. And also, finally, enjoy. This should be fun. You are sharing your thoughts with people. You get an opportunity for a forum. Enjoy it. It's really uh, something you don't get to do in a lot of other situations. So 